A great way to describe the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Fabulous. Welcome to Las Vegas. The night session after a crazy, crazy day in Vegas. And from Las Vegas, you're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. What a start to the day in the Mountain West. The one seed survives in overtime. Utah State is through to the semis. What a duel between UNLV and San Diego State. That was overtime. Aztecs advance, and we open our night session with the two seed Nevada, the seven seed Colorado State. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Waltz, along with former Gonzaga All-American Dan Dickow. Evan Washburn will join us. Who needs seeds here? There's seven teams that came into this tournament with a chance to win it right now. Every matchup feels like it's going down to the wire. Yeah, the team that you would consider the seventh team, UNLV has been playing as well as anybody. They lost in overtime. The first two games today in overtime, I wouldn't be surprised if we have more of those theatrics in the nightcaps. All right, let's start and dig in on this one, and we go with Nevada. Steve Alford's team is really hot right now. They have one of the best shooters in the country, not just the conference, in the country, and that's Jared Lucas. Yeah, Jared Lucas is a chip off the old block. The old block being his coach, Steve Alford, the former All-American at Indiana under Bobby Knight. He has become a great reader of screens and when to cut, how to cut to create space. When you pair that with his shooting ability, he is dangerous to the opponents. Inside the numbers, look at how hot they are. They've won 10 of their last 11, a seven game streak, and it's been sparked by the hot shooting of Lucas. They're in the top 25, and everyone expects Jerry Palm especially, he's the one that counts, that they're in the NCAA tournament. So is Colorado State. How many conference tournaments can say the number seven seed is 37 in the net and in the NCAA tournament? That's what it feels like for Colorado State. Well, they've put together a phenomenal year. They've been ranked as high as 13 in the AP poll, and a lot of it is because of Isaiah Stevens. This league has a lot of point guards. He might be the best of all of them, the only player in Division I with 500 points, 200 assists, and 100 rebounds on the season. Anytime there needs a big play to be made, He's the guy that's going to provide it. It's a beautiful offense, Dan Dickow. You would have loved this in your days at Gonzaga. Assist to turnover ratio. This is in the country on the far right. Assist per game, two-point percentage, field goal percentage. They are fun to watch. Oh, they space the floor so well, may make plays for others. And then Nico Medford instills confidence in guys to make shots. Well, today was fun. Tonight is just beginning. Isaiah Stevens and the Rams. Jared Lucas and the Wolfpack. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Kubota. Together we do more. By AT&T. We believe connecting changes everything. And by GEICO. For all your insurance needs, it's easy to GEICO. Night starting to fall on Las Vegas. Ringside seat for everything today is Evan Washburn. And we join him now before the start of this one. Evan? Hey, Rich. Good to be with you. Nevada comes into the Mountain West Tournament as the hottest team in the conference. But they're also coming in banged up and a bit under the weather. They'll be without one of their key weapons off the fence, Hunter McIntosh, who did not make the trip here to Las Vegas as he deals with knee soreness. They want to try and get him as healthy as possible for the NCAA tournament next week. And also talking to Steve Alford yesterday, this team is fighting the flu bug. They're trying to get through it with rest and IV treatment, but this is something to keep an eye on as they try to win three games in three days. That's, uh, that's not easy to do, and in this league, it seems like it's almost impossible for any of these teams to get through. Kubota brings you the lineups. We told you about Isaiah Stevens. Joel Scott is playing his best basketball. Number one in green. That's important. But he's matched up against Nick Davidson. That's a matchup to watch between those two in the paints. Yeah, Joel Scott, Division II Player of the Year. His season ago, the transition's been easy. 
And Nico Medved, four 20-win seasons, been to the NIT semifinals, NCAA tournament in 2022. They're 23 and nine, they're 37 in the net. Jerry Palm has them as an eight seed. Jerry has Nevada as a six seed. They are 30 in the nets. Tempo, Dan Dicka. Well, both teams are really good offensively, but they attack a little bit differently. Nevada will run Lucas off a ton of screens where Colorado State is a little bit more ball dominant with Stevens, not necessarily in pick and rolls, but putting him in decision-making opportunities. KJ Hines starts as a big for Nevada, steps in, misses the shot, got the rebound. Copley set to 20, Hines right back up and he's fouled, and that's Joel Scott with the foul. Keys to the game. Well, I think Colorado State has to rebound. That's one area that they struggle with at times. And get transition points. The Wolfpack are really good defensively in the half court. For Nevada, limit Isaiah Stevens. Leads the Mountain West in assists. He's actually the active leader in assists in Division I. And stay hot from three. Ever since Mountain West play has started, they have shot the best percentage from beyond the arc. Himes doesn't play a whole lot. Nevada likes to go small, but as Evan told you, Hunter McIntosh, the, the first guy off the bench and in that rotation is not here. We'll see a lot of Tyler Rollison and a lot of Daniel Foster as well. But McIntosh loss is key. He had 26 points in a big road win a week or so ago in Boise. Six of six from beyond the three-point line. Stevens off a screen, little pick and roll there. Cartier kicks, Strong a three. He's in a real shooting slump is Josiah Strong. He's won for his last 21 from distance. He's a guy who they've relied upon over the course of his career to shoot it. He's just, as mentioned, struggled as of late. Clock is down, Cartier is good and low, and he's fouled there. He was essentially the low post weapon last year, but with the arrival of Scott, he's been pushed out on the perimeter. This time he got it and got fouled. A tremendous pass from Clifford Cartier, a good job sealing. May have gotten away with it, travel on the catch, but you're right, Rich. Every inside tandem has their unique quirks that they have to work out. Cartier better on the interior season ago. A lot of it's due to the spacing that Joel Scott presents. Not quite as good as it was last year, but still effective. Nico Medved played a really good non-conference schedule, 39th in the country, and was rewarded with it. Jerry Palm has him as an eight seed. And look, there's seven teams in the Mountain West we told you about, and all season long, good on good, they beat each other, whether it's on the road or on your home court. There were some big wins for every one of those seven teams. Davidson cut off there. Not only are these tremendous teams, but the Mountain West has some really good venues. It's difficult to win on the road in this league. Good job by Clifford on Lucas. Now Davidson with a left-hand swoop, and he has the first bucket for Nevada. Talked about the footwork on Cartier on that first post opportunity for him. Davidson, tremendous with his balance, his footwork. He can finish with either hand over either shoulder. He's the most improved of the Wolfpack. Scott does not shoot a lot of threes. Leaning in on Davidson. The cutter is cut off. And that was Blackshear that got a hand on it. Great recognition on the weak side from Blackshear. And you're gonna be a great defensive team in the half court. You've got to be connected. Your weak side has to shrink into the paint, be able to come up with loose ball opportunities like that. That's a quick trigger. And that's Lucas off the screen. Sliver of daylight and a 16-foot bucket. That's where he excels. Good job reading wide pin downs. Coming off the screen tight, shoulder to hip, ready to shoot upon the catch. They've isolated Cartier twice, and he's had a couple good looks. That's how he thought he was fouled. A 5-1 start for the two-seed, Nevada. Trey Coleman, Lucas, Blackshear, three-guard look. And of course, Blackshear and Coleman are locked down defenders. And here comes Foster, another great defender, into the ball game. And so a corner out of bounds with 11 on the shot clock. 
Lucas again, same spot. Scott has the rebound. Stevens, they like to push and slip further. Nearly didn't execute the jam, but he gets the bucket. That's one of my keys. Find transition opportunities. Clifford there. Wasn't a clean dunk, but he'll take it. Steve Alford talked about that very sequence, and that's an offensive foul on Blackshear. Well, one of the ways you get your teammates wings and bigs to run the floor as a point guard is throw the ball ahead. Isaiah Stevens, one of the best in the country at that, pitches it up ahead to Clifford. He finishes over the top. Clifford is the guy guarding Lucas tonight. Stevens is drawing Coleman. Nice, great find. And that's what Isaiah Stevens is all about. Well, Stevens went through the NBA draft process a season ago, learned a lot about himself, his game, and, and what he needs to improve upon to be successful. Nico Medved told me earlier in the year, really what it did is it allowed him to be more comfortable Gain confidence that he's doing things the right way. He came back, he's been a tremendous leader, but he's also stepped up his game to another notch. Lucas looking for daylight. Foster's had some big games, had a nice game against Colorado State. I don't know that he beat the clock. The Colorado State has the rebound. And again, they'd like to push it, get up in transition, and get Scott the ball in that spot. Got him in the air, missed the shot. Lucas has the loose ball. Got to finish. High low opportunity. Scott has the smaller Foster on him in that situation. Shot fake, get yourself an angle, finish the bucket. Nevada is a terrific defensive team. Coleman misses. Numbers. Steve is looking for trailers. And a bucket. Always with his head up in transition, seeing opportunities to get to the ball to teammates but also understanding where the back flow of the defense is the pull up in transition one of the hardest shots to stop stevens has mastered it during his time in fort collins if colorado state can get him out in transition that keeps him from getting smothered in the half court by the nevada defense and a timeout the day session was crazy two overtime thrillers night session in vegas Need I say more? Nevada and Colorado State in the Mountain West. Seven seed Colorado State, two seed Nevada, evenly matched here, and they were on February 27th. In fact, tie game late, time running out. Jared Lucas half court, and it is good for the win. He had missed three of four free throws in the final minute, and he's a 90% free throw shooter. But a half court shot, no problem. Off leg, too. Usually a right hand shooter in that situation. Shoot it off the left. He was off the right, but he made up for those three missed free throws you mentioned. A six seed for Jerry Palm. Nevada had a really good non-conference and some key wins. And they've done a lot of good work with quad one wins. You know, this is a team that, frankly, you could say limped into the tournament a season ago with four losses, lost their first game in the tournament a year ago. But they've taken that frustration from that effort and really built upon it. They've got experience, they've got scoring, and they've played really well as of late, winning 10 of their last 11. Joe Palmer has checked into the ball game, along with Jalen Lake. So Nico Medved going to his bench. Palmer has been really good of late. Lake has been banged up a lot this year, but is playing well, and he's played well in a couple games against Nevada Palmer. It's a three and a miss. That's an important shot, though, for Palmer to take and knock down. Made four threes last night. Two of them in the first half were part of a 15-0 run that really kind of separated them from San Jose State, who played a, a really good game, especially in the first half. That's a real battle down low. Cartier Davidson's falling out of bounds, and he is out of bounds. That's a lonely feeling if you're Nick Davidson. <laughs> Walk the plank. Try to stay on balance. Yeah, foot down. You brought up a good point. I mean, the key right now for Colorado State, and even Nico Medved intimated this to us tonight, 
They have to get points from someone other than Isaiah Stevens. Whether it's Palmer off the bench, maybe Strong catches fire. Joel Scott inside. Stevens can't do it alone. And then a lot of their offense is based on him making plays for your, for others. But to win in March, whether it's conference tournament or NCAA tournament, you've got to have somebody else step up other than your stars. <laughs> well, he's doing it all right now. That is true. Stevens hits a three and stretches the lead to 10-5. You see the drought for Nevada. It stretched four and a half minutes now. And as Tyler Rollison is in, it's a 9-0 run for Colorado State. Clifford's done a, a nice job on Lucas so far. Coleman, and that's not his shot. The clock didn't reset. Foster beats the clock. And a battle for the rebound. And it's ripped away by Lake of Colorado State. Palmer going hard to the rim and scoring. It's unique story. Spent some time at Division III Augsburg in Minnesota where former Laker Devin George played before a long NBA career. He does all the little things, does Joe Palmer. Rollison. That is deep. That wow. is good. That wasn't just deep. That was ultra deep. That was about 12 feet behind the line. Nico Medford told us he thinks Lucas may be the best shooter in the country. And when you shoot from the parking lot, well, that wasn't even the parking lot. That was the Las Vegas Boulevard, the strip. That's how deep that was. Wow. We watched him last Saturday dismantle UNLV with uh, early shooting, and especially from distance. And in his last seven games, he's red hot. 21 points a game in those seven. And, and he's shooting better from three than he is from two. He's one of those players that if you let him get going, he can get on a hot streak like no other. He plays with a lot of confidence. One goes in, all of a sudden, he is searching shots. Bemba is in. Rotation to Palmer. This is Tavy Jackson. And he will force that pass Foster with a steal. Great dig down on the defensive rotation from Rolleston to knock it free, allowing Foster to pick up the loose ball. Lucas now. Lake is on him defensively. Himes is fouled. And a timeout here. Got two great scores in this one. Isaiah Stevens. Jared Lucas. They're all here in the Mountain West in Vegas. And you're watching Bracket Week. Presented by Kubota. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Coach. Defensively, what do you want to see to try and slow down Colorado State yeah, here? It's more both offense and defense. Their pressure has been greater than ours. Their physicality has been greater than ours. And, you know, they played last night, so I think it favors them here. We The first 10 minutes are crucial that we stay there and we kind of get in our rhythm, but we got to be much more physical at both ends. Coach, thank you. Thank you. He really likes this team, Dan Dickow. And even last year, this team went to the NCAA tournament last year, got beaten the first four. But uh, all year long, every time we've met with him, he's got a smile on his face. He's got a great shooter, Lucas, but he's got guys like Coleman and Blackshear and Davidson. And not many coaches have done what he has done, and that's take five different schools to the NCAA tournament. Only three others have done it. Rick Pitino, Ron Kruger, and Tubby Smith. And Rick Pitino now become, could become the first coach to take six. They are battling on the battle right, on the bubble right now. That would be an amazing achievement because three weeks ago, St. John's was not looking great. Has there ever been a father and son on the bubble at the same time? We'll see Good Richard, point. Richard Patino later on with New Mexico. Yeah, how about that? What if one knocks the other out? What that family vacation would be like this summer? Well, you're sleeping outside. Stevens lobs. Scott with a catch. He can score inside, Division II All-American, but misses with the left hand. And Tylen Pope, who is in right now for Nevada. They've got some reserves in, including the man with the ball. That's Rollison. He's an electric guard out of L.A. 
Well, with McIntosh being out with the knee injury right now, Rollison's going to get a lot of those minutes. The difference really being between the two, they're very similar games. As McIntosh has the experience, Rollison, this is his first go in the month of March. He's the point guard of the future for the Wolfpack. Steve Alford really likes him. Of course, Nevada didn't play yesterday. Colorado State was pushed by San Jose State. And they, the regulars had to play full minutes. Stevens clears himself, misses the three. And Himes cleans it up. Black Shear, so big. Pope. That's the type of burst of energy you want from your bench. Tylen Pope able to be active on the glass, corral that rebound from the weak side. Not much of an offensive threat in regards to shooting the ball or, or scoring in different opportunities. He is a glass guy and get out and transition guy. Tylen Pope. Transfer from Tulane, first one this afternoon. CBS Sports celebrates Women's History Month, recognizing the outstanding contributions women have made on and off the field of play. Gloria Navarez, the commissioner of the Mountain West, in attendance. We've seen her all year at all the, the great venues across this conference. Got to be pretty proud with Jerry Palm right now, six in. The bubbliest of the teams, if you can say that, is New Mexico. They're the first in Jerry's first four in. Well, you look at the overall resume of the league. I mean, only two other leagues can claim as many teams in the top 40 of the net as the Mountain West can. That's the Big 12 and the SEC. And Joel Scott with a bucket and a foul and a free throw coming. Joel Scott puts KJ Hines directly under the basket. Chance of the three-point play. Colorado State is unique in the fact that they're the only team in the country that has three 2,000-point scores. Isaiah Stevens, Joel Scott, and Patrick Cartier. Granted, Cartier and Scott spent time at the Division II level, but still, you have to be a tremendous player to score that many points in your career. And they have seven players, seven, that have played over 100 games in their career. This whole league is like that. This is a veteran physical league. Just ask any coach. Every night in the Mountain West is not an easy night. Black Shield. Coleman's back in. Lucas still on the bench. And Rollison off his foot. Was it tipped? There's one second left on the shot clock. It's going to be Nevada's ball, but they're going to have to go the length of the floor off of Cartier's foot. Good call by the official. But you got one second, and what do you have in your playbook for one second? And you got to go length of the floor. Well, all good coaches, and I would include Alford in that mix, has something that his team has worked on at some point in the season. But the thing that's, is, th that's not it. <laughs> that's not it. But also, you know, when there's one on the shot clock in the college game, there might be 0 .3, 0 .4, you don't know on the shot clock. It doesn't go to tenths of a second like it does in the NBA. Good point. So for all intents and purposes, no matter what they did there. Nevada won both meetings between these two teams. We showed you the Lucas half-court shot for the game winner in Fort Collins. Lake, the 16-footer, if he can get going, it's a big boost. Jalen Lake busted a finger on his left hand, had surgery in November, and he's just starting to get back to form. He mentioned that broken finger. He had one of the gutsiest performances of the season. Had a broken finger, played against rival Colorado, and then had surgery the next morning. Dad, on that sequence, we could clearly see Jared Lucas frustrated, running the baseline, trying to run through screens, trying to get open shots. But for the most part, Colorado State 
has done a really nice job of limiting his looks and touches. Oh, they change up the look in what they do. A lot of times it gets a great shooter like Lucas or someone who can really read screens. You can't give them a steady diet of the same way to play a screen. Sometimes you need to lock and trail, which means you're basically right on their hip. Sometimes you force them away from the screen. Strong with the steal. Blackshear with a block. And Pope with the drive. It's a block on Scott. What a turn of events. And Nico Medved head in hands. Well, that's March. Don't give up on plays. Make the extra effort. Blackshear with a tremendous block. He's one of the best defenders in the country. Such a unique player. Spent a couple years at Florida Atlantic before transferring to Nevada. Was more of a wing until last year when McIntosh went down with a knee injury earlier in the season. Alford switched Blackshear to the point guard. And I'd say it's a pretty good experiment that's worked out. Davidson against Cartier now. Spinning and missing. Kept alive by Pope. And there's a Cartier foul in the process. Colorado State is not real deep with their bigs. Yeah, that's one of the areas they struggle is rebounding the basketball. You know, Joel Scott is thick, but he's not necessarily tall. Cartier is only about 6'8 as well, so that's a concern for Colorado State, especially into the NCAA tournament. Stevens. Palmer the three. Missed it. It wasn't even close. He hit two yesterday from that spot in the first half. Lucas has had three shots. He's hit two of them. This a three. That's. I don't know much more you can do defensively if you're Jalen Lake. Great defense, better offense. Good pass. Bullet for a bucket. And that was Lake. Just look, that we were lined up perfectly. There wasn't a whole lot of daylight. That's a, a to use an NFL term. That's a small window. Yeah, that's a small window. Is right. A terrific pass from Stevens. But Lake realized he was topsided by Jared Lucas in that regard. Back cut. Put some pressure on the rim. That's pressure on the rim. That's Tylen Pope. That's what he does. Be opportunistic on the glass as well as in cuts. Stevens has three assists to go with five points. Palmer is fouled going to the bucket. And a timeout on the floor, 7-52. Left in the first half. Isaiah Stevens, he's the scorer for Colorado State. Jared Lucas, the shooter for Nevada. It's bracket week. It's presented by Kubota. Welcome back to the Thomas and Mac. We'll coach first 12 minutes of this game. What are you most pleased with, with what your team's done? I think our defensive intensity is is awesome. So I love the aggressiveness that we're playing with. We're not calling any plays. We're just playing basketball. And so I love our edge right now. Uh, we've got to do a little bit better job on the glass, and we got to play physical without fouling. So we've done a great job challenging shots, but can't give them second shots, and we got to stop fouling. Coach, appreciate you. Thank you. Nico Medved's done a terrific job in Fort Collins. We look at his progression. Now this is four 20 or more wins in a season, 23 and nine here. And a guy that's been along the, the ride for most of the way is Isaiah Stevens. It helps when you have a, a point guard who started every game of his career, such as Stevens. But, you know, Medford said they've been playing out of concepts as opposed to sets. And Stevens understands how to play dribble handoffs, pick and rolls, he does an amazing job of collapsing the defense, such as that play where four Wolfpack converge. Find your teammates for easy opportunities. And he's on the bench right now to start out of the timeout. Palmer is fouled by Coleman. Joe Palmer and Trey Coleman matched up there. Palmer wears a headband, not to control the sweat, but so his grandmother can identify him when she's watching the games. She had trouble at his previous stop figuring out which one he was. He tried yellow shoes. That didn't work. 
So he went with a headband, and so now he's headband Joe. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, hopefully his grandma's watching and enjoying the Mountain West tournament. He was a Division Three All-American. Headband Joe goes to work, and he's going to the line. Maybe passed up a corner three, but as I've watched him throughout the course of this year, that's where he's at his best. He'll hit an occasional three here, there, but he has one speed, and he knows how to play one way, and that's attacking the rim with effort. Gets himself in the line for two. That foul was on Trey Coleman. It's his second, and we check in with Evan. Hey, guys, this run for Joe Palmer in March is a dream come true, and last night you could hear it in Nico Medved's voice. I mean, he was emotional talking about what it means for these guys, especially the D2, the D3 guys. And there was a sense of relief. There was an elephant in the room going into last night's game that, man, if we don't win this, we're in a bad spot heading into the NCAA tournament. Now they're just playing free and loose. And Evan, you know, it, that was the, the rallying cry for the last few games of their schedule. They weren't up against the big seven, as they call them in this league. They were playing the, the teams that had nothing to lose, and Colorado State had everything to lose, much like that first round matchup. Clifford, the Colorado transfer is short on the three. Up the floor, Clifford with a steal. Clifford down the lane, bumped, and it's a foul, it's Blackshear. Well, two mistakes in a row for Blackshear. First, the turnover, trying to throw it over the top to Davidson, where really, had he caught it, I don't think there would have been much of an advantage. And then defensive transition, you've got to wall off the perimeter that's attacking you without fouling. The good news right now for Colorado State, the other on top, but they're staying on top without Isaiah Stevens on the floor. They're, they're able to rest him. Now remember, they played yesterday. They're able to rest him and, and not give up the lead right now. Blackshear's foul is his second. So if Blackshear and Coleman are both on the bench, that's two premier defenders lost for Nevada. Blackshear's on the floor. Blackshear's at the rim. That's unacceptable if you're Nico Medved. Get beat off of a missed free throw in transition for a layup. Nevada now showing a little 1-3-1 zone. Evans with the drive. And an offensive foul. I think Cartier may have been moving. Cleared out the way for Evans. I mean, there was an opening, but when Cartier created even more space. It's an easy call for the official from the baseline. Yeah, that's a... That's a no-no. That's a pretty blatant <laughs> one. That's his second. So, Cartier on the bench with two fouls. Scott, another big, also has two fouls. And Stevens is back in. It's a, a small lineup on the floor right now for Colorado State. It's a small lineup as well for Nevada. And that is an offensive foul, and that's Davidson. Well, Davidson's got to understand, you get a switch, and Josiah Strong, who you've got an advantage on by about four or five inches, is now switched upon you. Have patience. Understand that Blackshear and the other perimeters, it's their job to create an angle for you as you hold your seal with the mismatch. Zone again. Strong. And Lake. Not a lot of ball movement against the zone. Clock is down. Got to get it up. Stevens dishes. Clifford stumbles. Clock expires. Wait a minute. There's a foul called. Was it before the clock expired? I don't know how much of a foul that is. Steve Alford's. Definitely got the ability to gripe on that call. I thought Clifford on his cut tripped. He tripped, tripped over Foster, yeah. That should not be a foul in my eyes. But it was called. 
And so the question is, was that before the shot clock had expired? And apparently it occurred. Watch the shot clock. There's the trip. And so, yeah, it's going to be free throws. That's a real break for Colorado State. That puts Clifford at the line where he's nearly an 80% free throw shooter. Spent three years at Colorado before transferring to in-state rival Colorado State. He's been really good throughout this season. Makes one of two, lead is four. We're under six minutes left, first half. Foul trouble for Colorado State. And two starting bigs on the bench, Cartier and Scott. And Blackshear driving. These two teams are not nearly as physical as San Diego State and UNLV, which was essentially a slugfest second game of the early session. But it feels like the officials are tightening this game up right now. Blackshear does a lot for this team, and he, he does everything really well. Free throw is in. Make sure to tune in. 2024 Reese's College All-Star Game is presented by Walmart. April 5th, 6.30 Eastern. It is live, and it is right here on CBS Sports Network. Talk about the physicality of the previous game, San Diego State UNLV. We had the Nevada UNLV game this past Saturday, and that game was extremely physical. But San Diego State has been the team that's kind of set the bar of how physical you have to play, in particular on the defensive end of the floor. And others have matched it. Boise State in recent years has become a similar type program that end of the floor. Strong. Oh, Clifford down the lane. Remember, Steve Alford told Evan during his chat, we need to be more physical. Ball's tipped loose. Lake has it, and he's fouled Rollison. And right now, Colorado State has got a bounce in their step despite playing yesterday and Nevada having yesterday off. You've got to find ways to create opportunities. Neat Clifford isn't blocked out, which sometimes can be an issue in the zone, gets the put back, but terrific on-ball defense from Josiah Strong, able to come up with the steal. It's fouled at the line for two. Excuse me, Jalen Lake. So foul trouble for Nevada. Coleman and Blackshear have been on the bench with two, and now Rollison, who's the backup guard, he's got two. And this is where they really miss Hunter McIntosh. Without a doubt, you know, as good as these teams in the Mountain West are, each team has a hole. And I think with McIntosh out, you know, it places a lot of burden on a young point guard as a freshman in Rollison to kind of be that spark off the bench. They're going to keep Rollison in the game with two fouls. You saw Blackshear and Coleman on the bench. Lake has the assignment of Lucas here. Rollison doubled. Kicks. There is Lucas. Didn't take long for that release. And a rebound for Colorado State and a foul on Davidson of Nevada. Colorado That's his State. second. That's a big second foul, but Colorado State dodged a bullet there. Jalen Lake in rotation went to a non shooter. Daniel Foster giving Lucas an open three in the corner. I don't know how. That should have been a foul. Didn't seem like a whole lot there. There have been 20 fouls already in this first half. And that previous game, San Diego State, UNLV, that would not have been a foul. <laughs> that would have been a, just a little pat on the wrist in regards to how physical that game was. Jazz Gardner comes in, and so now Davidson has to sit down. Sean Memba. And the free throw is up and good. Lead is nine, and it's the biggest one of the night. And Rollison's in some trouble. And Rollison 
Did they get a timeout? Yeah, they did. Steve Alford is not happy right now. He's got a ton of guys on the bench with two fouls, and he's down nine in the Mountain West. Four and a half left, first half. The seven seed Colorado State, a nine point lead over the two seed Nevada. AT&T at the half is coming up. Brent Stover, Wally Zerbiak, Chris Walker, and John Rothstein have been watching this conference all season long. They'll give you certainly the highlights of that UNLV San Diego State thriller. Both the games here, overtime games, and a lot of great games across the landscape of college basketball on AT&T at the half. Rich Waltz, Stan Dickow, Evan Washburn. In the paint, Colorado State, they're one of the best two-point shooting teams in the country percentage-wise. And a lot of that's because Stevens delivers the ball in the paint. He, he delivers the ball on time and on target. Nico Medved in his offensive attack has great spacing of creating mismatch opportunities when the opponent switches, but they've also got a lot of skilled players who can make plays when the opportunity arises. Lucas trying to clear space, kicks to Rollison, quarter three. Uh-uh. How long does Steve Alford keep all the two fouls on the bench? That's a tough one. I mean, you want to try to maybe get at least what you're going to now under the final media timeout, but you also you don't, don't want this Colorado State lead to get extended anymore. Stevens, Foster's on him, and Foster blows up a screen. And that's an easy call for the officials. He tried to run right through Rashawn Bemba. And that's Foster's second foul. Five Wolfpack now with two fouls apiece. Get another look at it. Nevada going to have to clean it up on the defensive end of the floor. Colorado State looking good. 29-20 Colorado State. It seems like everybody but Jared Lucas has two fouls. They're going to need more from Lucas right now. They're going to have to find ways to get him some more open looks because when he's got them, he's knocked them down, including this one from 41 feet. Unbelievable range. Reminds me a little bit of a shooter that's in studio back in New York, Wally Zerbiak. I had the pleasure my sophomore year at University of Washington watching him in the NCAA tournament against the University of Washington Huskies that I was with at the time dropped 43 points on us. Jared Lucas can get hot as a shooter similar to Wally Zerbiak at times. You were an old school transfer, not a portal guy. You sat out a year yep. going from Washington to Gonzaga and played two years at each institution. Best thing that ever happened to me was that redshirt year having to sit out. I know there's not the emphasis and the enforcement of that anymore with the transfer rules, but I think it would do a lot of players good to take a year of skill development, understand and learn what their coaches want out of them, and it would help them to be more successful when they're ready to play. We're running out of room for Nevada players with fouls, but it's been a tight whistle for sure. Lucas baseline, hit it. He, he may have been bumped as well. Could have been a foul. Shows you the type of space or the lack of space that he needs to get his jump shot off. So Foster has got Stevens with Coleman and Blackshear on the bench. Foster's a very good defender. Ball's loose. Stevens picks it up, kicks it, rotate. That's Lake. That's a three. Under 30% three-point shooter on the season. Knocks down a corner three in a critical moment. Blackshear is back in with those two fouls. And Stevens with a steal and a race for the bucket. Blackshear in pursuit. Stevens tried to pass it to Lake. And Lucas is fouled by Clifford. Blackshear, that was a gutsy play. He's got two fouls himself. He decided to chase down Stevens and contest. Stevens heard the foot, footsteps, wanted nothing to do. Probably remembered the Blackshear block earlier in this half. Great effort there. That's the kind of plays that endears Blackshear so much to Steve Alford and the staff. Extra effort such as that. Lucas has not only NCAA tournament experience, been there a couple times, 
but success as well as Pope earns more free throws. Lucas is 90% from the strike, but missed that front end of the one and one. Of course, he was with that Oregon State team that went to the Elite Eight. He averaged about a dozen points a game on that team. And here's Pope. And he'll get two. So, Maxure is back in. Davidson is back in. And Foster is still in. And they all have two fouls. Here comes Himes. I like the substitution there for Steve Alford. Bring KJ Himes with those two in and get Davidson off the bench. In particular in defensive situations, if the curious hit on a dead ball, who brings him back in offensive defensive situations with those two fouls on the half. And of course, Himes has two fouls as well. But as far as impact on the game and scoring, Davidson is a bigger emphasis for them to keep him with only two. Backside lob. A dime from Stevens and a dunk from Clifford. And that's the beautiful offense that Colorado State has this year. Stevens, sixth in the nation in assists per game. Blackshear cut off, Pope going strong, barreling his way through, and it's a block. Last bucket for Colorado State against the zone. Josiah Strong goes from one side of the floor to the other as the ball is passed. Will set a back screen in this zone, allowing Nick Clifford a direct line to the rim. Throw it up, let him get it. Easy two, terrific execution for Colorado State. Tavy Jackson is headed out of the game for Colorado State. He's got three fouls for the Rams. And Polk. Going to cut into what is a 10-point lead now for Colorado State. Remember, Nevada beat Colorado State both times they played in the regular season. In Reno, it was a 13-point win. Of course, the Lucas half-court shot to win it by three in late February. Late corner three. He's hit two from there. He has hit two from there. Against the 1-3-1 zone, corners are the spots that are open. You've got to be aware. Every time the ball moves, whether on the dribble or the pass, you have to shift. Blackshear against Clifford. A lot of dribbling for Nevada. Lucas trying to get loose. That's a walk and a turnover. When we had Nevada and UNLV on Saturday, as mentioned, the offense for Nevada was flowing much more freely that day. Give Colorado State a lot of credit. They have kept Lucas in check for the most part. Yeah, he's got 10 points, but he's only been able to get free for six shots. And there's not a lot of live ball turnovers or missed shots. Colorado State shooting over 50%, and they've got just four turnovers in the half. That's one way to, to gum up that offense, and Stevens misses a three. Lake again. He's got another three threes. Well, why not? You've already hit two in a row from the corner. Jalen Lake with 15 points. Off the bench for Colorado State. And the lead has ballooned to 41-26. Biggest of the night. Lucas is fouled, trying to get off a screen. Long rebound, pops right back out to Lake straight away. After hitting two, no hesitation letting it fly from straight away. So Lake has his first, Lucas back at the line. Steve Alford told us that Nico Medved confirmed it when talking about Jared Lucas. 
how improved he is since he arrived at Nevada and moving without the ball. And he has shown it tonight, trying to get loose with most of his mates on the bench. 41, 28, Colorado State. Here we are, first game of the night session in Las Vegas. Two overtime thrillers. Fresno State played their hearts out tonight and took Utah State to overtime. Dedon Thomas was spectacular, but San Diego State in overtime ended up winning that game 74 to 71. If you hadn't, you haven't seen Dedon Thomas play and you were lucky enough to watch that second game, you watched a guy that is just a miraculous. Look, this conference has great point guards. There's one of them right there. Isaiah Hill from Fresno State's terrific. I mean, there's a long line of point guards in this league that night in and night out are doing incredible things, and Thomas was just that. As a freshman, nonetheless, he should be a senior at Liberty High School here in Las Vegas. Isaiah Stevens, big shot there. I mean, it's hard to pick the best point guard in this league. As good as Stevens is, and he's All-American good. There's other guys in this league that are right there with him. Darius Brown was really good in their win today. Foster, nice offensive rebound and putback. Stevens, final seconds, first half, knocked loose. Rollison's fouled. He is fouled, and he's going to get free throws, three of them, as the half has ended. Well, Nevada needed a break going into this half. Everything seemed to have been going Colorado State's way. They come up with the steal and the loose ball. And you might not like it if you're a Colorado State fan, but it is the right call from the official. Isaiah Stevens collides with Rollison as he tries to get the shot off. Officials are looking to see. Well, the, the foul was on Stevens, so he had left the scene before the buzzer. This is one of the great additions to Love it. conference week is the fact that the officials have a microphone over there where they look at replays during the regular season. We're many times at the mercy of them coming over to us and explaining the decision that they have made. And this same technology will be used throughout the NCAA tournament as well. Well, this officiating crew has been pretty busy. There have been 25 fouls whistled. 13 on Nevada, 12 on Colorado State. Stevens has the foul there. And remember the foul at the end of the, the shot clock that went Colorado State's way early in the first half. So the foul happens clearly there before it gets to zeros. But I believe what they're looking at is when the official whistled it as a foul. Well, if it happens, if the foul's on Stevens, he's clearly away from the play and there's time on the clock. So then the other thing they could be looking at is... Was he shooting? Was he shooting, which would result in three free throws for Rollison as opposed to just the two. After review, the foul occurred with 0.3 seconds remaining on the clock. Nevada will have three free throws. Love it. Michael Irving, along with Eric Curry, Ryan Holmes, trio of officials. So there's still time left in the half. There's 0.3 seconds left. And that's going to put Rollison, who I'm sure has just as many fans here from Los Angeles as he did when they played against UNLV at 25 family members. Stevens getting that foul. with an opportunity to cut into the lead and get it down to 10. We've seen Nevada enough to know that they have the firepower to get rolling and erase this lead. Nico Medved is not pleased. 
Rollison does just that. It's all three free throws. Colorado State defended, got to the line. Nevada was in foul trouble throughout. And as a result, the seven seed has a 10 point lead. 43-33. Let's go down to Evan Washburn with Nico Medved. Well, Coach, the frustration on your face is obvious. How do you keep the way that first half ended from impacting the momentum? No, that was fine. We played well. Just unfortunate situation. I thought we got fouled on the rebound, and then they call that. We played exceptional in the first half. That's one play. We'll move on from it. Uh, we got 20 more tough minutes. How did you turn over a team that doesn't turn it over much 11 times? I thought you did a great job of, like, pressuring the ball, and, you know, our hands were active. We were swarming to the ball, and I thought we played with a lot of physicality. I mean, a lot of fouls there in the first half. I think both teams were really getting after it. Nevada's a physical team, but, again, like I said, really good first half, but we got a really tough 20 minutes ahead of us. Coach, thank you. Thank you. They have yet to beat Nevada this year. They're 0-2, and Nevada's got firepower. Nico Medved and Colorado State, though, have a 10-point halftime lead. We'll send you to Brent Stover and company in our New York studio. AT&T at the half is coming up. It's the Mountain West Conference Tournament in Las Vegas. And the Rams lead at the half by 10. First game, night session, quarterfinals Mountain West in Las Vegas. No truth to the rumor that Bono was here for the day session, but had he been here, two overtime games, 10 point lead for Colorado State. Rich Waltz along with Dan Dickow. We'll hear from Evan Washburn shortly. Colorado State played a perfect half. I know they had foul trouble. Nevada had more foul trouble. But Nico Medved's got to be pretty pleased up 10. Yeah, he's got to be happy. I thought they got production from everyone on the roster. He didn't always show up in the box score, but Jalen Lakes, Definitely showed up in the box score, did a tremendous job, whether Nevada was man or zone, staying spaced deep in the corner and being ready for his opportunities because all eyes are on Isaiah Stevens at all times. Many times, you just got to be ready to deliver. First half stats brought to you by J.P. Morgan, wealth management, field goal percentage jumps out. That does not allow Nevada to get rebounds and, and start the flow up the floor. Well, they're typically a low turnover team is Nevada. Look for them to clean that up early in the second. All right, let's check in with Evan Washburn. Evan? Rich, yeah, that would speak to what Steve Olford told me. He said we were out of character in that first half. That doesn't happen with us very often, saying the pressure bothered us, said they were soft on defense. They need to be more physical on both sides. And Guys, this team's going to have to prove they can do something they haven't done all season. Two and six when trailing at the half. Their largest deficit they've overcome eight points on this floor against UNLV. Uh, that's a good note there, Evan. They're going to have to also stay out of foul trouble. Scott's going right to the bucket, and it's blocked. Nick Davidson, and here's the flow off the block, and Blackshear hits a bucket. Exactly the start that Nevada wanted. Get a stop, get out in transition, put some doubt in Colorado State's mind early. Remember that three-point play in the final second. Stevens gets in with a left hand. Finishes. So strong for a point guard. Took the hit from Coleman, was still able to get his shoulder down and by the defender for the creative finish. So everybody who has the two fouls is free to play as they want now here. Coleman, a three! And Nevada comes out firing. Coleman's been their unsung hero a lot of times throughout the season. Scoreless in the first half. This is strong. Cartier, a rare three. Blackshear. Big, strong guard. Bucket there. And look at Nevada. Remember, they were down 13, got the whistle, got the three free throws with point three seconds left, and here they are down five to start the half. Floater by Stevens. Davidson the miss. <laughs> Coleman on Stevens. Himes, great entry. Way up to get it. Shot clock down. Lucas sees it. Lucas going in the lane, spinning, falling, and scoring. 
What a start to the half for the Wolfpack. They have climbed back in and in a hurry. Blackshear and Lucas not to be denied. A lot of energy on the bench. Scott going hard, backing in, spinning, blocked. Hines from the offside. Stevens, plenty of clock left. Cartier, double comes, splits the double, fouled, and it's Himes, it'll be his third. Shot clock winding down. Jared Lucas, one of the best in the Mountain West at creating space. Usually it's off of cuts, that time off the bounce. He likes the result, two points. Cartier gets to the line. He's an 85% free throw shooter. And let's check in with Evan Washburn. Evan? Yeah, guys, one other note from halftime. As Nevada was coming out on the floor, they came to a team huddle, and Jared Lucas had one message. Remember last year, they lost in the quarters. They were upset. You guys touched on it in the first half. The tail end of last year was kind of a tailspin, and then they lost big in the NCAA tournament first four. So he was kind of remembering, guys, that as they took the floor. All right, thank you, Evan. The start of this half has been a, a torrid one, a 7-0 run. Colorado State still at five. David Sun, and it goes! And a free throw. And they can draw within two. And that is Cartier's third foul. I'm sure it's putting Nico Medvin in the decision-making possession, but Nick Davidson, such growth from Last year to this, he likes the result. He'll be at the line to finish the three-point play. What did Evan tell us? Steve Alford said we were out of character. Well, they're, they're, <laughs> they're right back in character in a hurry. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I mean, they turned it over 11 times in the first half. On the season, they average under 10 turnovers per game. So. A little careless with the basketball. You got to give Colorado State some credit for that, but tremendous response to start the second half. Strong hits a three, and that's notable. He was one for his last 22 from distance. A little more breathing room for Colorado State. Davidson. Has the size advantage. It's around strong, falling away. Stevens in motion. Stevens going baseline, cut off and fouled. And Davidson picks up his third. Stevens puts so much pressure on you in defensive transition. Probing with his head up at all times. Didn't like it. Kicked it back out. Got it back from Scott. And then the miscommunication with the matchups puts Davidson on him, and that is a tough ask of any big. One of the things he does well, and it doesn't show up in the stats, he doesn't try to do too much. He doesn't force things. He's very under control. He's skilled, he's under control, he plays with patience. Joe Palmer plays with his foot firmly on the gas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he went right to the bucket. The grandma has to be happy that he's back to the line. Yeah, he knows, and that's Davidson. What a way to play. Davidson, remember, just picked up his third. He didn't come out of the game. That's his fourth. That's a tough one for Nevada. Only five points, but he's such an integral part of their attack. Two points in the first half. Had that three-point play a possession or two ago. Well, Steve Alford's going to be in a position where I would imagine if Colorado State makes a run here, he's going to make a decision of whether he's going to bring him back in early or not with those four fouls. A, a bit of good news is that the guy that came in for him had a really good first half. Tylen Pope had eight points. He's active on the glass. Got himself fouled, six and six from the line. Blackshear against Clifford. Lucas begging for a touch. Foster, Clifford with Stevens. And Stevens finishes. Defense to offense in the blink of an eye.
Hold it against Stevens. Again, Nevada needs to get Lucas some looks. And that's not happening. That's blocked. That's Clifford. I'm sure Clifford and Lucas have been matched up in the Pac-12 before. Scott, good shot fake and a bucket. What a response from Colorado State after Nevada looked like they were back in it with a 7-0 run to start the second. That's an 8-0 response by the 7 seed, Colorado State. Their lead almost lost. They're back up by 10. Get out in transition off of a turnover. Clifford over to Strong with the finish. Don't go anywhere. We got a great one in the Mountain West. Tomorrow we're back to Alabama semifinals. Conference USA it starts at 12.30 Eastern. UTEP taking on Sam Houston. Sam Houston the one seed. Later at three, Middle Tennessee gets the winner of New Mexico State and Western Kentucky. And of course, we also have the championship game here on CBS Sports Network, 8.30 Eastern on Saturday. It's a heck of an answer by Colorado State. It really is. 8-0 run, and you would expect the production to come from Isaiah Stevens. That hasn't been the case here early in the second half. Scott Strong, in particular, have gotten things going for the Rams. All right, during the 8-0 uh, run, a clean sheet. Blackshear, Coleman. Remember, Davidson on the bench with four fouls. Colbert trying to get in tight. Clifford's having a heck of a game, and he comes up with another rebound. <laughs> Stevens up the floor. Kick. Three. And Strong missed it. Watch you. Lucas against Scott. Tried to sell a foul there. He wants an isolation. Gets to the lane. His bumps. No shot, but a foul. He puts officials in such tough positions to make calls. Does a good job selling it. Quick timeout. You're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. No surprise in the Mountain West that the first two quarterfinals were thrillers. The best teams, the seven best teams in this league, have been so tightly bunched with great net rankings and great standings. And of course, you've got Nevada, Colorado State. We've got the three seed, Boise State, and the number six, New Mexico. Richard Patino in New Mexico. Now, they're the bubbliest of the teams in the six that Jerry Palm has in the NCAA tournament, but they're the first team of the first four in. If they lose a tight game to Boise State, that doesn't end their NCAA tournament hopes. Probably doesn't help them. But obviously, they're going to win tonight, and that's a huge hurdle to get over. It would go a long ways, but that's where, you know, the bracketologists and the selection committee who makes the final decisions, they've got some tough decisions to make. If you watch the play, you, you, you would say they're an NCAA tournament team. You look at their net, they're a 25. You definitely would think they're in. But they've struggled in a few games down the stretch, which would give you pause. Tonight, if they were to win, would definitely ease some pressure in Albuquerque. Lucas forced it. Pope had a shot blocked by Clifford. And here comes Colorado State with a 10-point lead. And to stay on New Mexico for a second, you know, they didn't have their whole team healthy in the non-conference. Two starting guards, stars, Jalen Mashburn and Jalen House, play they combined 39 minutes together in the preseason. So gives you just a little bit of the fact that they haven't been at strength throughout the season. And talk about that strength. Isaiah Stevens going strong to the rim. <laughs> it's Blackshear's foul, and it's his third person. As well, you mentioned the net. New Mexico, 25 in the net. That's, that would be the best net not to make the NCAA tournament as an at-large team. Yeah, last year, the best net not to make it was 40. Rutgers, historically, the best net rank team not to make it would have been in 2019, the first year of the net with NC State. So you would think that they're in, but crazier things have happened. 
in regards to the selection committee. And, the I, and, and that's not the be-all, end-all. Correct. It's not the be-all, end-all. It's just one of the big tools that they use. And trust me, there is lobbying going on behind the scenes. I would expect each conference to try to make sure that the selection committee understands strengths and weaknesses, but more than that, the strengths and the reason why teams in their league that might be considered on the bubble should be firmly in. Palmer, a rebound off the miss by Lucas. That is a walk. Bemba was waiting for pressure and it never got it. He stumbled across the lane. Good call from the official. Jared Lucas says a lot of Little guys in that position will do is pull the chair on the defender because bigs are taught to search contact, feel your body, and spin off one way or the other. You don't feel the body, you're off balance, resulting in a travel that time for Bemba. Evan pointed out the ability for Colorado say it's an offensive foul. Foster running through a screen, Clifford hit the deck. And that's the third personal on Foster. Four on Davidson, three on Foster. Slid a little bit to the right. As physical as this league has been throughout the year, I could have seen that going play on, but official called it. And Hines as well for Nevada with three fouls. Stevens, step back, three. Yes. Isaiah Stevens is all that tonight. 13 points, five assists, and just two turnovers. What gets lost with him because he's such a great point guard who averages around seven assists per game is he's shooting 46% from three on the season. And a lot of it is because he doesn't take bad ones. He's a few makes shy of qualifying for the, the lead in the NCAA, but if he were ranked, he would be fourth in all of college basketball. Opportunistic from the three-point line. Doesn't necessarily search him out, but you leave him open, he'll make you pay. Lucas gets the foul and gets to the free throw line. Neat Clifford has had the assignment most of the night. He's done a pretty good job. Even though Lucas has 14 points, it feels like it, he's been effective. He's done a really nice job, I think, in limiting the fact that Lucas hit a couple early threes with searching shots, but he couldn't create space, find space. Only 10 field goal attempts on the evening. That time, a crafty veteran move by Lucas to get Clifford in the air, get fouled, get to the line. And to be clear for New Mexico, they are the first team in the last four in. So they're up at the front of that quartet. And Jerry Palm's brackets. Long way to go here, 13 minutes left. Nevada was down 13 in the waning moments of that first half, got a foul at half court, hit three free throws, and then made a blistering run to get within a couple. So Colorado State, the Rams had an answer. Stevens, that looked like five steps down the lane. No whistle. Stevens alone. Palmer. Big one there, right in front of his bench. The Ram Faith will love it, extending this lead to 15. Rollison, how does Nevada recapture the run that got him close to start the half? Himes in, and a free throw comes. Well, Nevada's run to start that second half was getting out in transition with such patience for Colorado State. Jackson, an initial ball fake, and then delivers it to Palmer. Nevada gets an opportunity bucket on the interior for Himes. Not known as a scorer. With foul trouble, you gotta look to others to give you a little bit of impact. Maybe Himes can be that guy. Offensive rebound. That's another 40-footer. He hit one in the first half, missed it there. Eight is 13. You see the foul trouble. It's weighed heavily on Nevada's rotation. Coleman, Davidson, Blackshear all spent a good part of that first half on the bench. This is Lake missing the jumper. Blackshear pokes it loose. Ball on the floor. Hines. 
Lucas hunting a three here. Rollison in the lane. Got it up. And gets a free throw. And a timeout. The seven seed Colorado State, a 13 point lead. 11.37 left, second half, you're watching Bracken Week. Presented by Kubota. Boise State is in the house. They'll be watching between games. The road to the Final Four continuing as we're headed to New York inside college basketball right here on CBS Sports Network. And look, New Mexico is right there with them. That's going to be a fun one. New Mexico and Boise State. Colorado State is turning them over and cashing them in. A lot of it is due to the activity of Neat Clifford on that end of the floor. Comes up with a block shot, ignites his own fast break where a terrific throw ahead to Joel Scott who finishes it. And then he shows you the versatility, gets the steal, pushes it off the dribble, this time hitting Josiah Strong. Neat Clifford, one of the more undervalued players throughout the Mountain West. He's been really good for Nico Medved after transferring over from Colorado. He may be the MVP tonight of Colorado State. Ten points, six rebounds, four assists, three block shots. And of course, he's had Lucas every time down the floor. And yeah, four or five from the field, too, so absolutely. Allison misses the second of two. The lead's 12, but we saw how quickly the 10-point lead disappeared for Colorado State to start the second half. They gotta try to get back into that groove. To do that, though, they need to get some turnovers, get some missed shots. Bemba's cut off. Clock is down. That's a high degree of difficulty. That's uh, that's Joe Palmer again. He shrugged his shoulders towards the Colorado State bench. All things are going Colorado State's way in this moment. Nice move by Himes to get up and under. I mean, kids, you, you may not remember this, but Teen Wolf was a, a popular basketball movie, and Palmer is kind of embodying that with the headband flying all over the court. What oh, pass. fine pass. Stevens and Bemba finishes. Well, that's what great point guards do. They don't read their defender. Sometimes they read the defender in a pick and roll situation like that, but really what they're reading is the help side. They make a mistake, easily find the roll guy because the help side has gone in the wrong direction. He's, he's about six feet tall, but man, he just finds guys. What a find, Isaiah St Stevens to Bemba. Stevens picked up a foul goal. He's got three personals. Thirteen points, six assists, two turnovers. It's notable. Colorado State has just six turnovers in the game, and Nevada has turned it over thirteen times. Well, that's one area that Nevada typically is really good at, value in the basketball. The other area that's been in Colorado State's favor is the glass. On the season, they're negative against their opponents. Tonight, they're hanging tough with plus two on the glass. They're a great passing team. We've documented that. And tonight, 15 assists to go with 22 field goals made. Stevens using the Scott screen, gets inside, delivers to Scott, who scores. And another assist, Stevens has got seven. Well, Scott not, might not be the tallest. He might not be the most vertically able in regards to finishing over the top, but it's such a great use of his strength. Creates the contact, is able to finish through it. Blackshear. Gets in and scores, and he gets a free throw. He and Blackshear is such a difficult cover for most guards in this league. He searches contact, 
in penetration, then he's patient. He'll give one more hit to create space, and he's got terrific touch around the rim. Nevada in crunch time down the stretch at the end of the Mountain West regular season. Won seven straight. They won 10 of 11, and they had to do it for a couple games without Blackshear, who was out with a calf injury. That's impressive. Because a lot of those games were big games against highly ranked teams. And in that time, Hunter McIntosh, who's out right now with a knee injury, was enormous. And hoping to have him back for the NCAA tournament. Provides another ball handler and then a terrific shooter. Stevens in, and he's fouled. Rawlison trying to defend him. And with all the foul trouble that the Wolf Pack has had, especially in their backcourt, they certainly miss McIntosh tonight. They miss McIntosh on the offensive end, but as well, his experience going up against a player like Stevens is definitely a help. You want to be able to throw multiple fresh bodies at somebody like Isaiah Stevens and change the look throughout the night. You were a combo guard, right? You played for you and Blake step kind of shared the point guard duties. You've watched Stevens now his whole career. Five years, he's the active leader in assists. Where has he made the biggest improvements? Well, I think his ability to pick and choose when to look to score and when to make plays. Uh, for someone who can do both, a lot of times you'll kind of get excited to do one more than the other. When I've watched him throughout this season in particular, he's done a really good job of taking what the defense gives him and then making them pay. Because when you can shoot it, you present problems. They guard you one way, now all of a sudden, you're able to make them make mistakes and you, you make them pay with the pass. Foul on Scott. He and Cartier were trying to sandwich Himes. And Joel Scott picks up his fourth. So maybe the foul trouble swings to Colorado State and Nevada can take advantage. It's something to definitely keep an eye on. Nevada now in a one and one. It's Joe Palmer back in the game. Palmer had a career high yesterday with 14 points. He's followed it up with 10 tonight. One and one. Himes hits the first. Jared Lucas has 16 for Nevada. Game Blackshear, the only other Wolfpack in double figures, has 10. Press break works. Palmer turned down the three. Clifford almost walked. Davidson with four fouls is up to block it. He's going to be a great player before he leaves here. He's skilled. He competes, as you can see here. He could have easily given up on the play. Fights to get back in front. Gets the block shot. But Davidson's skilled. Competes. He's got great footwork. Really good IQ. Comes from a Wolfpack family. His dad, Kirk, played basketball at Nevada. His mom played volleyball. So you can look at him and say, this is a guy who's a foundational piece the next couple of years in Nevada. Eight and a half left. Opening game of the night session. Third quarter final in the Mountain West. Rich Waltz, Dan Dickow, Evan Washburn. Foul trouble for Nevada. Coleman three. Yes. And maybe Nevada's ready to make a run like they did when they got within two early in the second half. Extending their pressure now. 2-2-1 full court. Oh, Palmer. If you're going to pressure, sorry, Rich. If you're going to pressure, you got to recognize when you're beat and sprint back. Palmer, that was just a straight line run from baseline to the front of the rim. And Clifford now has five assists to go with his 10 points and seven rebounds. Again, Lucas somewhat contained in this game, and Himes was fouled by Joe Palmer. Headband and all, Palmer down the lane. Press break, trail the play, be opportunistic. Joe Palmer takes advantage. Headband Joe putting in work. We are back. 
72-61. Nevada's trying to get back and get close in this game like they did at the start of the second half. Rich Waltz along with Dan Dickow. Look, Nico Medved told us before the game, we need other guys to score besides Isaiah Stevens, and that's happening right now. Yeah, Joe Palmer, Neek Clifford, Josiah Strong, they've all been really good tonight. Every time Nevada seems to be about ready to close the gap, make a run, one of those three has responded for Colorado State. All right, where are we on the keys to the game? Well, I think for Colorado State, again, rebound. They've done a nice job in that area. Transition points, they've been opportunistic for the Wolfpack. They haven't limited Isaiah Stevens, but not very many people have this year. 15.7 rebounds, and they haven't been as hot from the three-point line as they have throughout Mountain West play. We'll see if that changes, which very well could be with Jared Lucas down the stretch. When Evan had his head in a huddle, Evan, what would you hear? Well, guys, you can sense that Colorado State, these next four minutes, can start to push themselves towards the semifinals. But the topic of discussion just surrounded the personal fouls. They just got to find a way, as Nico Medved said, without fouling. You've got two players with four and then two with three. That could really drastically change how this game wraps up if they continue to foul. So the lead is 11, seven and a half left. Thank you, Evan. Stevens rising, it's short. Look at Palmer. He seems to be in on every play right now. He and Clifford have been terrific. Well, that pass wasn't great. Well, third offensive rebound for Palmer. They weren't able to convert that time, but he has been really good in the little categories that make a difference. Lucas taking it upon himself. And he does this quite well, and that's get to the line. Shot fake, man in the air. He's really good at, at drawing the contact and getting the whistle. Cartier's fourth. So now three Rams with four, but Jared Lucas doesn't have what I would call a creative or tight handle, but he gets to his spots, and because he's such a good scorer, little shot fakes, eye fakes, the defense has to respect it. He'll get him off balance. He'll then create the contact. Does a great job getting himself to the free throw line. Biggest lead in this game was 15. That was in the final stages of the first half. Biggest run in this game was a 12-0 run by Colorado State here in the second half. When Nevada made their run to get within two, that's when Colorado State bounced right back. Coleman gets a hand on the ball. No over and back. Bemba from the high post to the bucket. Missed it. Clifford, another rebound. And he bounces it off of Polk, and they'll keep the possession. The little plays have really been the difference throughout the night. Palmer crashing the offensive glass. That time, Neat Clifford seemingly do it all. One rebound now shy of a double-double. Demba leaning, spinning, and scoring. Remember, Davidson has four fouls. Not much he could do defensively. Yeah, you're right. Put up a fight for position, but when you get put in a bad spot, you cannot pick up your fifth when you're a low post scoring threat yourself on this end. But Davidson will reverse. To a nine point Colorado State lead. Davidson really battling with Bemba in the block. Stevens against Davidson. Pull up. Oh. A good rebound there by Polk. Blackshear ahead. Davidson position. That's a goaltend. That's a bucket. And Nevada has a little life here with five and a half minutes left in the ballgame. Terrific rim run in transition from Nick Davidson. Recognizing that Isaiah Stevens has three, he's not going to foul. He gets out of the way. Easy two after the trail defender, Bemba, is called for the goaltend. Nevada showing life. Seven-point game. 
Just under six minutes left. First two quarterfinals in Las Vegas were overtime thrillers. We got to try to make this one a little more thrilling. Palmer. No. And a rebound for Nevada. And here come the Wolfpack. Blackshear. Lucas looking for the ball. Pope is open. We got to get matched up in transition. Colorado State doesn't. The vision of Blackshear finds Pope for the easy deuce. Six of their last six from the field is Nevada. A 6-0 run, and they have chewed this lead down to five. No communication in transition. Strong, Palmer, and Scott. Nobody matches up with Pope. That's the easiest two Nevada has had all night long. And the impressive thing is they're doing it really without Lucas. I know he hit a couple free throws, but he hasn't necessarily been a factor. He's been contained. He does have 18 points, but he really hasn't blown up like he has this season. He's still got 18 points, 5'11 from the field, but he's doing a good job of not forcing the issue. Exactly. Because he's such a threat, all Colorado State players are tuned into what he's a part of, the action. Is it a pin down? Is it a screen away action with him involved? And so a lot of times the focus would take you as a defender one way, creating an opportunity like what Pope just got. However, I mean, Lucas is Lucas, so he's hit a lot of big shots in his career. Yes. And this is his time right now. And he wants the ball in his hands. And as a coach like Steve Alford, who was successful himself as a player in this situation, you love having someone who's got that confidence to want the ball as well. Nevada within five and a ton of time left. Stevens tonight, 15 points, seven assists. Scott backing in. Cartier kicks. Lots of clock left. Clifford, good fake, and a turnaround. Lee Clifford, the former Colorado Buffalo, having a huge night tonight. He's almost at a double-double. Nine rebounds to go with a dozen points. Scramble for the ball, it's out of bounds. And it's Colorado State's. Actually attacks on the baseline. Floater over the top. Joe Scott wasn't able to corral it, but Himes couldn't get good enough position to get it cleanly. For Colorado State, expect the ball to be in his hands, Isaiah Stevens on almost every possession to make decisions. Remember the last time they met, it was tied in the final seconds. Cartier with a cut and a layup. And of course, that was the half-court shot by Lucas to win the game. But here, every time Nevada makes a run, Colorado State has an answer. And an answer here to stretch it back to nine. The seven seed leads the two seed in the Mountain West. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by J.P. Morgan Wealth Management and by Holmes.com. We've done your homework. All right, let's switch to easy mode for the Geico play of the game. Well, Joe Palmer recognizes we broke the press. They're not matched up. I'm going to keep running right to the front of the rim. Nobody on Nevada recognizes what's going on. Palmer with the easy dunk. And Palmer with a, a nice night. A dozen points following up 14 points in the opener against San Jose State. That's a career high as a Colorado State Ram. Six of seven Nevada has made and they got within five on this run, but it's back to nine. That's a foul. A moving screen. Nevada is not happy. I don't know about that one. 
That is a play that Nevada will run pretty frequently oh. where the two bigs set in the screen will squeeze off and get shoulder to shoulder. I think you're right. I don't. He Clippers didn't look like he was to run right through him. He was moving backwards after he got hit. Yeah. I mean, usually you're told by an official in that situation and you've got to try to avoid the screen. Clifford ran right through Pope's chest. Great for Colorado State. Cartier. Against Davidson, who's got four fouls. Clifford, corner three. Scott stumbles and has the rebound. Stevens a cut. Scott barrels in. And Pope with the foul. Free throws coming. And for Pope, it's his third personal. Joel Scott, Division II Player of the Year. Two final fours at Black Hills State, which also produced uh, P.J. Hayes, a shooter for Steve Lavin at San Diego. And we've seen a lot of coaches mining Division II, even Division III, for players, guys that were standouts there that they feel can make the jump. Well, with the transfer portal, and the ability to easily transfer and not sit out a year. It makes it very appealing for a coach to go get a 22-year-old as opposed to try to rely upon a young freshman who may be 18 or 19 years old. Blackshear drives, kicks, Foster three. That's a big shot for Nevada. Daniel Foster. Now, crazier things have happened in this league this year. Colorado State, a great example of that. Up 11 at home against Wyoming with under a minute to play, and they lost in overtime. There's a steal. Coleman. Blackshear surrounded. Still goes to the rim. Nevada keeps the ball. In that game, Wyoming, as you pointed out, rebounded two intentionally missed free throws to complete the 11-point comeback to tie it and then won it in overtime. Scott, I don't know if that's as crazy as Utah State's five-point play in the waiting moments here yeah. to beat UNLV, but that's those two comebacks are the, the wildest of the Mountain West season. Well, Utah State forcing overtime after a Missed free throws by Boise State in Boise and then scoring at the buzzer. That would have been another one. Strong misses. Scott is a beast down there and he scores. And he's fouled. Joe Scott just knows how to play. He's a willing screener. He's good at ducking in, creating opportunities for himself and for others. He's physical on the glass. He makes plays that all winning teams need. Davidson's fifth. He's out of the game. I mean, there's Palmer, who came from Division Three. He was an All-American there. And there's Scott at the line. He was an All-American twice in Division Two. And they look just fine here in the Mountain West, which is one of the best leagues in college basketball this year. Well, a lot of it is, unfortunately, you, know, you start off maybe at a lower level because you're missing one piece of your game or there's a physical attribute that doesn't sell you to the Division I level. But players who believe in themselves and keep working, there's a place for them. Blackshear falling away, wow. and he hits a tough shot and ends up on his back. And single digits again. But not a lot of time for Nevada. Buck 40 left. 82-74. The seven seed Colorado State. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
But as we said at the outset of the show, pay no attention to the seeds in this tournament. The difference between one and seven in this conference isn't much. Scott, the miss. Chance to get a little closer. Blackshear spinning, Blackshear creating, and getting to the line and stopping the clock. And almost out of gas, and it's notable. Evan started the show with this tonight. There's been a flu bug that's gone through Nevada, not as an excuse at all, but there's been some guys that have been sick for the past few days. And as you see, Blackshear peeled off the deck. Well, then you got other guys who are battling injury. Blackshear missed two games late in conference play. They're missing Hunter McIntosh, who's been really good as of late. You want to see all teams in conference tournament play be at their best physically as well as skill-wise at this point. And you're right, Nevada's just a little undermanned with injuries right now. I don't think I've ever seen Blackshear, and we've seen him a lot in his career, ever seen him this gassed. No, he plays hard. He rarely takes a possession off. You can see it on his face. He is tired. This is a free throw. Thirty-five attempts. Twenty-five makes. Seven-point game. Stevens breaks the press with strong. Mika Medved pacing in front of his bench. Will Pack need a stop? Stevens doubles. Clock is down. Strong. Stevens. Three. Uh uh. And Scott is. Has the ball, but I think he fouled to get it. And that's five on Scott, and it's free throws at the other end for Nevada. And that's what you don't want if you're Colorado State, is foul, stop the clock, allow Nevada to score without any more time coming off. It could have gone either way, to be honest with you. And that was Blackshear that went down, and he just stopped them for about 15 seconds, was doubled over in the center of the court. They may be looking for hook and hold in this and a possible flagrant. I don't think they're going to see anything other than the foul that they called on Scott. Again, I think it could have gone either way. Sometimes when you've got experience, you have these little tricks. You mentioned hook and hold. I don't think it was a hook and hold. I agree with you there, but you find little tricks of the trade to kind of lock your arms up in a way that you can sell leverage and contact on your opponent to get the call from the official. Remember, Nevada's the two seed. They're number 30 in the net. And Jerry Palm has them as a six seed right now. So if they lose After this game, they're calling the floor stands. If they lose this game, they're still in the NCAA tournament. It yeah, would, it would hurt their seeding, you would expect. But it's not a look. This is not a surprise because we've seen this night in and night out in this conference. Good on good. Everybody has had losses this year. I mean, the net again has become such a value tool by the committee, but Nevada sits at 30, Colorado State at 36 coming into this game. I both, I feel they're both firmly in the field, but you don't want to leave anything to chance, especially in regards to your possible best seeding opportunities. And Blackshear, again, is just absolutely gassed right now. Thirteen points, six assists, three rebounds. Big free throw there. I'd expect Nevada to three-quarter court pressure. They've shown it 
at times the 2 2 1. They got beat on the Palmer dunk, but also they've shown 1 2 1 1. Missed it. Rebound. Oh, it's Blackshear. Followed the shot, and the lead suddenly is four with 38 seconds left. I think if you foul, you got to go now. They're trying to double. Clifford, Lucas is going to come get him. Clifford's a good free throw shooter, 78%. Strong had the ball in front of the Colorado State bench. And they fouled three, four seconds earlier. He's a 73% free throw shooter. Cliff, Clifford, excuse me, has been really good tonight, although he's only been two of four from the line. He gets two here. For Lucas, his first foul. Fouled out for Colorado State with Davidson for Nevada. Nico Medved. Right now, 37 in the net and an 8 seed for Jerry Palm. So the reverse for Colorado State. They win this game, they'll probably help their seeding and obviously get into the semifinals. Of course, this is the first of two tonight. We've got New Mexico and Boise State. 3-6 matchup in the Mountain West. Here are your brackets. Boise State beat New Mexico twice this year. But New Mexico has a dynamite backcourt with three weapons. Dent, Mashburn, House. Boise State has three bigs, though. So that's a real contrast. Strength and weaknesses. Will it be the speedy guards of New Mexico? Will it be the three bigs of Boise State? Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating matchup. Boise State, as mentioned, has won the two games this season. But it's hard to beat a team a third time during the season. We're seeing it tonight. Nevada won both of the matchups with Colorado State early in this year. But it looks as if Colorado State will move on to a victory, barring any last minute heroics. But when you have a shooter like Lucas, you're always in the game. Lucas, 18 points. He's two of six from three. Blackshear starts it. Lucas will set a pick and then pop. Lucas driving, kicking. Blackshear rotates. Coleman, step back. Three on the way. It's strong. Rebound Foster. Lucas in the corner, clearing space. Lofts it up. Almost hit it. Rebound to Colorado State. 9.3 left. The Rams are going to do it. Joe Palmer, his second straight performance in this tournament. A career high yesterday with 14 against San Jose State. And Palmer with 12 here. Lake was so big in that first half. He has 16 points. That ties his career high against Colorado. And so what Nico Medved preached to us, we need more than Isaiah Stevens to win tonight. He got. Rollison's three. Nevada still in the NCAA tournament. Colorado State in the semifinals. That'll help the seeding. That'll help the Nets. A total team effort for the Rams. Total team effort is right. Five Rams in double figures. What a game for Colorado State. They needed it for seeding in the NCAA tournament. But I have a feeling they're not done yet. They've been ranked as high as 13 in the AP throughout this season. Important to be playing great basketball this time of year. Got one more left tonight. The three seed Boise State, the six seed New Mexico. Overtime the first two games. Neat Clifford with a, an outstanding effort tonight. He did everything for this team. Clifford 14 points, 10 rebounds, five assists, and he had three block shots. 
Evan Washburn is with the leader of the Rams, Isaiah Stevens. Isaiah, congratulations on the win. This is the type of game where Vegas and the boxing community would be proud. It was punch and counter punch. How'd you hold off from Nevada when they kept coming back? I, that's been the Mountain West all year. You're playing high level teams with guys that can go and make plays at any moment. And you know that they're going to throw punches at some point. So you just got to withstand some and throw some of your own. And I feel like we did that today. Understanding it's about this tournament, but is there any extra added not motivation, but satisfaction in winning this game after what happened a few weeks ago? Uh, it definitely hurts a little bit thinking about that one. And it was a heck of a shot by uh, Lucas. But we just want to go 1-0 today, just trying to improve each and every day as we build into March. And I feel like we're really starting to cook with some grease right now. Congrats. Get some rest. We'll see you tomorrow night. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. This was a fun game. Thank you, Evan, against uh, two NCAA tournament teams. Colorado State gets the win. Nevada's in the tournament as well. Dan Dickow, Evan Washburn, our entire CBS crew. I'm Rich Waltz. So long, but not good night from Vegas. Coming up, New Mexico, Boise State. Last game in the Mountain West quarterfinals right now. Back to New York inside college basketball. Bracket Week presented by Kubota.